by the righteousness of God. You're going to do right because whether men are looking or not looking. Because why? It's the right thing to do and you've been made right with God. You're going to do right now not because mama looking, daddy looking. Amen. You're going to do right because you know who you are in him. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Now, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7, 8, and 9. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7, 8, and 9. And then I'll go to verses 21 through 25. Let me read this to you. And it says, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Now here the Bible is speaking about Lot, who was a righteous man, who was vexed with the unrighteous conversation or the unrighteous lifestyle of the people that were around him. They were living all kinds of way there in Sodom and Gomorrah. But God, who is righteous, we told you before, had to get Lot out of the overthrow. Even though Abraham interceded for God to find 50, and he got it all the way down to 10, and God could not find 10, so he still had to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but he got Lot and his family out. His wife turned back and became a pillar of salt, because God told him, if you turn back, amen, don't turn back once he got him out of there. And she turned back and became a pillar of salt. But God was so righteous that even though he did not find the amount of people, the number 10, did not find 10 righteous in the city, he still got them out. Now that's important because it shows you how righteous God is. It would have been unrighteous for God to kill the righteous with the wicked. Hallelujah. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25. I'm, I'm showing you something here. It says, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Christ left us a what? Example. That we should follow his what? Steps. Who did what? No sin. Neither was God found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to, ju to him that judged how? righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live how? Right. How should we live? Right. Unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So he's telling us that before we came to God, we live one way, but now we're the follow in the steps of Jesus, who committed himself saying, look, I'm going to do right because God is too righteous to bless me when I'm wrong, but he must bless me when I'm right. Amen. You got what I'm saying? Amen. See, if you ever get that attitude that no matter who does you wrong, if you do what's right, God will still bless you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, a lot of people, they, they, they don't understand that. So what they want to do, they want God to bless them, and they're not focusing on righteousness. But you got to focus on righteousness. You got to focus on righteousness. The Bible said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, Matthew 5 and 6. They shall be filled. Then Matthew 6 and 33, we've been quoting it to you so you can get it in your spirit. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. God will add a car to you, house to you, money to you, if you seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. Go after doing what's right. Amen. Make righteousness a priority for your life. Amen. Just do what's right. Amen. Amen. And when you miss it, say, Father, forgive me. I messed up right here. Have mercy on me. I want to stay on this righteous path. Amen. Amen. People treat you on the wrong, job wrong, fuss at you, mistreat you. You ain't got to work. Just do what's right. God will, God will fix all of that because he's righteous. See, man ain't in control of this. God is. Man ain't in control of your blessing. God is. If God make a decision to promote you, no man can stop you. If God make a decision to raise you up for his glory, no man can stop you. And that's who you're looking to, God. 
The Bible said it this way. Promotion doesn't come from the east. It doesn't come from the west. And it doesn't come from the south. Promotion coming from the Lord. God is able to sit down one and raise up another. God can raise you up. Look at somebody and say, God can raise you up. Look, look, at, look at that. Now, I'm trying to show you these scriptures so you can get in your mind that your desire shall be granted. So you can get in your mind good things you're supposed to have in your possession. So you can get in your mind Proverbs 11 and 28. Look at Proverbs 11 and 28. Proverbs 11 and 28. It says, he that trusted in his riches shall fall. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. What the righteous supposed to do? Flourish. How far two people say you're supposed to flourish? I mean, you're supposed to get better and better, better and better. No, flourish, first of all, spiritually as a person. Flourish in your character. Flourish in the way you operate and function. See, before you got saved, you had a lot of bad habits. As I've been trying to teach on Tuesday night, that life works by cycles. Cycles control systems. And so you had a bad cycle going Amen. that caused you to reap a, a bad harvest. Amen. But now you got on a good cycle. Amen. You're now starting new cycles, Amen. which create for you a kingdom of God lifestyle rather than the worldly lifestyle, a kingdom of God lifestyle, which is a victorious lifestyle. All right, now let's look at what the Bible said in Proverbs 11, 18, and 21. Proverbs 11, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Proverbs 11, 18 through 21. All right, y'all hang with me. It said, the wicked worketh a deceitful word, but to him that soweth how? Soweth what? Righteousness shall be a what? Sure, sure reward. As righteousness tended to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. They that are of a froward heart, the word froward there literally in the, in the Hebrew just means crooked. Of a crooked heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now notice what he said. Listen, he said to the righteous shall be a what kind of reward? Sure reward. This thing is sure. This thing ain't well, you know. I know, no, people, say, you get a blessing, people talking about, well, you were lucky. Ain't no lucky. Luck. I don't know, look, I ain't got no four-leaf clover in my pocket. I'm not carrying around a rabbit's foot because I don't live life by luck. I don't live life by coincidences. I live life on purpose. I live life with an aim. I know where I'm going. I know I got a destiny. I know I got an assignment. And I'm on purpose living my life. Amen. Hallelujah. And God will leave some blessings for me on purpose. Hallelujah. Are y'all hearing me? No, Boaz did not leave some in the field for a uh, uh, roof. Unintentionally, he told them people, y'all leave, look, that woman right there, leave some out there, leave some handfuls of purpose, leave some stuff out there intentionally so that when she go down the road, she said, whoo, she go down the road, whoo, somebody said, whoo, you see, y'all don't even believe you're going to really have your turn, somebody said, whoo, yeah, yeah, that life, life going to leave you some whoo, you moments. You will have some warm moments. Glory to God. Because he said it's going to be a sure reward. Ain't no mistake. Folks talking about, well, you know, I, they, people tell me, give you a blessing to me. I, well, you know, they made a mistake. No, they made no mistake. They made no mistake. No, no, no. It won't no luck. Amen. No, you ain't got to cross your fingers and cross your heart, hope to die, and swear on your mama grave. <laughs> There's no luck stuff here. No lucky charm stuff here. This is this right here. You don't live your life by luck anymore. No luck, no chance. This is this is intentional stuff. This is God's word and his will coming to pass in your life. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 20, where we really get this uh, message from. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 20. It's a lot of reading, but I want you to catch it. It's talking about the story of a woman by the name of Hannah. The word Hannah means favored. Somebody say favored. favored. 
Look at your neighbor and say, I am so favored. I am, so favored. I am, I am. the righteousness of God. And I am favored by God, so I know a blessing is coming. I know a miracle is coming. I know a reward is coming. And I will not be denied. I will not be denied. You got to understand that, that, that Satan will sometimes let somebody who's working on his team put up a block or put up an opposition or put up a barrier against you. But you got to get past all of that. You got to understand that Satan, would, sometimes the stuff you believe in God to do in your life, Satan would put somebody out in front to say no to you and see are you going to back off and back down. But just because that person told you no, you still ought to say, that's all right. If you don't help me, don't mean God ain't got somebody else to set up to bless my life. <laughs> I ain't going to be denied. That's right. That's right. Look at somebody say, I will not be denied. Not be no, no, no. We need some folk that got that attitude. I will not be denied. Right. So many people got a passive or uh, uh, a case of raw, so raw attitude, and they can't get what God want them to have. God saying, wait a minute, it won't me that stop them. It was their own self because they got a no, and they backed off. I told them they could have it. I told them they could get it. I told them they could be it. But they got a no from somebody, and they backed off. They should have said, nah, I know God going to do it. Now I know. Now I know. Ah, yeah, shah, baba. <laughs> Y'all know didn't make me quit. Y'all know didn't scare me. Y'all know didn't intimidate me. I will not be denied about what God says should be mine in life. I told y'all my testimony years ago when the white man told me, look me dead in my face sitting across from his office. A man trying to buy some land in, in the Tarboro area. He said, you can get some over there in Princeville. Mm. He said, but you won't never own none in East Tarboro because of this. And he pointed to his face, a white man telling me and the young other man that I had with me, amen, members of the church. And I looked at him. And I said, all right, thank you very much, sir. Shook his hand, walked out, told the young man with me. I said, now nah, I know God's going to do it. Because right. right. we, we sing a song a long time ago, when the devil said no, no, God says yes. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, no, no, no. I wish I could find him now. I really do. I wish I could find him now. And I really walked right up to him. I said, sir, you said a long time ago that I would never own no property in East Tarbor, in the Tarbor, across the bridgeway, because of this right here. We not only own 1.4, but we own 11 more acres, a total of 12.4 acres. So don't tell me what God can do. I will not be. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all better shake somebody's hand because they, they ain't with you. But if they don't get with you, go to somebody else's hand. Shake their hand and say, I will not be denied. I will not be denied. I will not be denied. See, 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 see a lot of us, a lot of us wouldn't have never got healed like that person did that would lay flat on his back. Because we wouldn't have friends with us that had nobody with us that would help us get what God wants us to have. Yeah. The Bible said that the man had some people carrying him. And he went to the house where Jesus was in there teaching. And the Bible said they could not get in the door because of all the people. Now, a lot of us would have went home with the sick man. I said, well, I tell you what, we had to wait to another meeting because I tell you what, it's tight in there. It's crowded in there. But those folk knew that this man needed this healing. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And the Bible said they climbed up on top of the house and they started tearing up the roof. And they let the man, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If I have anybody here ready to tear up a roof in here. The Bible said they tore the roof up and let the man down where Jesus was at. And Jesus, the Bible said, when Jesus saw this man's faith, he said to this man, my God, my God, my God, your sins be forgiven. Yes, who this man think he can forgive sin? Man, I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus all, right, all right, take up your bed and walk. And the man got on down there. Walk right on up. He got out of there with what he came after. Look at your neighbor, so I'm going to get out of life what I'm going after. 
Now, I'm going to stop listening at those haters. I'm going to stop listening at those naysayers. I'm going to stop letting folks talk me out of my dreams and talk me out of my destiny and talk me out of my purpose. I'm not going to let my pocketbook stop me. I'm going to not let my savings account stop me. I will not be denied. Look at somebody say, this is my time. This is my time. This is my time. This is my season. I will.